I think we found the secret. The secret is in the bean water. Hey guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another cook with me video. Today I am going to test out a recipe with you guys and hope for the best. So we're gonna be cooking together. I love doing these cook with me videos, especially when I am testing out something new that I haven't tried before. So I'm gonna link that playlist down below for you if you want to check out more of these videos after you watch this one. So today I am going to be trying to make my own just egg. If you guys don't know what just egg is, it is this lovely bottle right here. Revolutionary product right here. This is plant-based eggs that you can buy at the store and you can just cook straight from the bottle, okay? You just put it on the pan, scramble it up, and call it a day. And it's probably the most realistic plant-based egg product that we've seen so far. And um, so therefore, it is very revolutionary and I do enjoy it as well. However, it is pricey, just like most vegan products out there, like products that were designed for vegans, not vegan food necessarily, but products that are designed for vegans and sold to vegans tend to be a little bit more expensive because it is a niche product and it is not as mass marketed as other products. So it tends to be a little bit more on the pricey side. So today I wanna try making our own because I've seen a few people make their own and I looked at a bunch of different recipes and I tried to make the simplest recipe that I could. So I'm gonna try it out. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I feel like it's gonna be delicious. So however way it's gonna go, I'm gonna have a blog post with the final recipe linked below. So definitely, definitely check that blog post out if you want the final ingredients and measurements. Hopefully I won't have to tweak too much. I already have it all kind of measured, but um, I may have to tweak things as I go. So before we jump in, let's look at the prices of Just Egg. So this bottle right here, 355 grams of Just Egg. It is 557 Canadian. That was the cheapest I think I found ever. I bought this at Walmart and it was 557 Canadian, which probably is nothing in American dollars at this moment. Um, that makes it $1.57 per 100 grams. Now, the main ingredient we're gonna use, which they actually do use in this product right here, is mung beans. This is split mung beans. This is what you will need, okay? I got this giant bag, again at Walmart, and this is a four pound bag, 1.81 kilos, okay? So we are talking a lot of mung beans. So this bag of mung beans, which is 1.8 kilos, costs $7.07 .07 Canadian. Very, very cheap because you're getting so much in this bag. So I feel like you could make so much just egg if this turns out deliciously. This is definitely, definitely a budget-friendly way to make this. So let's hope that it is absolutely delicious. So the first thing I actually had to do the night before, this is the only very annoying part about this making it yourself thing, is that you have to remember to do it the night before. It is soaking the mung beans, okay? So I soaked the mung beans in water. All you have to do is just take some mung beans in a big bowl and then just pour some water and I soaked it and this is the soaked and drained final product, okay? So it does expand quite a bit, probably more than twice the amount. So it is going to expand, so make sure you use a big enough bowl and just soak it in water overnight and just forget about it until the next day. So this is gonna help soften it and it's gonna help the blending process. All right, so now it's gonna be super easy. All we have to do is put stuff in a blender, okay? By the way, I'm also gonna compare. I'm also gonna cook this and cook this and then just compare how it is, okay? So let's um, add in the mung beans that are soaked into the blender. This is gonna be the main, main product. Everything else is basically just flavoring. It's actually a very cheap recipe. I am very excited, okay. Next ingredient is going to be some unsweetened non-dairy milk. We're gonna add this, this is oat milk. I think you can use basically anything, just use an unsweetened non-dairy milk. I may have to adjust the amount of this, let's see. Now I'm gonna add some oil. Now we wanna use a neutral oil, something like canola oil, vegetable oil, something that doesn't have a strong flavor because you don't wanna add too much flavor into it. But because we're making like an egg, we want it to be a little bit fatty. Now I'm sure you could probably eliminate this and not necessarily use this and then so that you have like a little bit of a healthier sort of vegan egg. But I'm gonna add it because I kinda of want that real like kinda of fattiness of the Egg. So let's add that into the blender as well. Next, I'm gonna add some nutritional yeast. This is a must. 
It's a must. We love nutritional yeast. Gonna give it more of that eggy color, and I think it's gonna add some nice flavors. I always like to add nutritional yeast when I make scrambled tofu and stuff like that, so I'm gonna add nutritional yeast. Next, I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Next is basically mainly for color, but we're gonna add some turmeric. It's not a lot of turmeric because turmeric is quite potent, but we wanna add that kind of yellow color into this non-egg, this vegan egg, so. We're gonna add some turmeric. Next, I'm gonna add some baking powder. This, I believe, is going to give it that fluffiness, that fluffy texture of the egg. We're gonna achieve, hopefully, through baking powder. And add that in. And last, but definitely not least, this is very important, I'm going to add some Kala Namak. Now, if you haven't heard of Kala Namak, it is also known as black salt. It is, I believe, an ingredient heavily used in Indian cuisine. So, I've been told that if you go to any sort of Indian grocery store, you could find Kala Namak for a pretty cheap price. Now, I have never needed to do that because I just bought a giant tub of this, okay, in a... Uh, on Amazon or something, okay? And I've had this for years, my friends, and I barely scratched the surface. So you could just buy it online or you could go to an Indian grocery store and it's probably, like this is gonna last me 20 years, okay? Like my children will use this. I do find that when I cook it, it does sometimes diminish the taste a little bit. So I may wanna add a little bit more um, on top of the final product. So I'm gonna add some of this into the uh, the blender. There you go, those are the ingredients. I try to keep it as minimal as possible and simple as possible. I'm gonna give this a good blend and then we're gonna cook it up. Yay! All right, you guys, so this is the final product or the, the blended product. Consistency-wise, it looks pretty good in my opinion, I don't know. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cook the just egg first and then I'm gonna cook the mung bean egg and then we're gonna compare. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil on the pan, just a little, just a little spray. Little spritz, okay? And then um, let's add this. Now what I find is this as well, like it's already, this is so much more product, okay, you see? This, I feel like the problem is it, there's really very little product. It says use a third cup. Let me, let me cook a third cup. So it says here a third cup is 100 grams approximately. That's gonna be potentially a serving. Now this bottle is 355 grams. Now I don't know why they didn't just make it, you know, an even number of servings. <sighs> I hate when they do this, okay. So apparently this has about three and a half servings of egg. So this is a third cup, so let's see here. Oh, I don't think this is hot enough yet. <laughs> I was hoping for a sizzle. So I think consistency wise, it looks like very similar actually. I wish I had two pans so we can cook it at the same time. If I look at the color and like how it looks, it looks like basically the same. We're gonna give this a few minutes, finish cooking it, and then we'll cook our homemade one. Does it even have? Oh, scramble like eggs. <laughs> As if, whoa, okay, so it's already, I think it looks quite eggy. They do a good job, okay? I was gonna use another pan to cook the homemade stuff, but I feel like we can just use this pan. Okay, I think we're done with this one. Let's uh, set that aside. That's the just egg version. Now, now we're gonna add some more oil. Just a little spritz, okay? Let's cook the same amount. Not that, you know, really matters because this is already a lot cheaper. Ooh. Okay, so like literally presentation wise, I think it looks the same so far. I don't know if I should start moving it right away. For the other one, I let it sit for a while and bubble. So maybe that's what we need to do. Ooh, it's already, ooh, guys, hello. So it's, it's already started cooking. Obviously this was hot already, so. So it's a little more like floury than the just egg, like it seems more, ooh, but it, it's cooking quite nicely, I think. It's definitely not as like gummy, like it doesn't come together as nicely as the just egg. Maybe, maybe using a little tapioca starch might help with that. Maybe I should have left it to cook a little bit longer. Um, it's like it's giving that kind of like flour sort of consistency. I don't know. If I'm if I'm <laughs> articulating properly, it's looking kind of fluffy. Like it's it's giving a little pancakey sort of vibe. I think I'm gonna try cooking another batch and seeing the best way to cook it. This could be great for an omelet. I think. Yeah, I think an omelet would be perfection because it seems to be quite easy to you know flip over. It seems to stick together quite nicely. So this one is the store-bought just egg, and this one is the homemade mung bean egg. So I'm gonna give it a taste, and then I'm gonna experiment with cooking it maybe a little bit differently. All right, so let's try the just egg. I have tried this before. 
Yeah, let's try it. Mm. Okay, texture is definitely there. It definitely reminds me of that scrambled tofu texture. Taste-wise, I think it could be a little bit more eggy. I think because I'm eating it on its own, it's not giving too, too much of that eggy flavor, but usually you put this with, I don't know, you eat it with like, I used to eat my eggs with ketchup, so I would put ketchup on it or like put it in a wrap or something. So it is good for what it is. Now, I am curious. I'm a little nervous about this one. Let's try the mung bean egg. Cheers. Hmm. I almost think the taste is better with the mung bean egg, but the texture is not exactly like the just egg. I'm thinking maybe I need to add some tapioca starch to make it kind of more gummy. Cause right now this is, it's really good, but it's giving more like sort of pancakey texture. Like I kind of was worried about. I think it's a good idea to put a little bit more of the Kalanamak at the very end here because then it's gonna really give it that eggy sort of taste. So let's try it with that. Mm, okay. Once you add that Kalanamak, I think it tastes very eggy, but I think the texture, hmm. How can I improve the texture? It's really good. I keep going for it. Yeah, they use like gel and gum, tapioca stuff. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna do a little experiment because I found tapioca flour and I'm gonna add a little bit of it into this mixture and I'm kind of trying to create that kind of slightly gummy consistency. But I think, again, but I don't want to take away from what this is. It is actually quite eggy in my opinion. <clears throat> now the question is how much do I wanna add of the tapioca flour. So I'm gonna add a little less than a teaspoon because I just used a little bit of the egg already. So so this part is, again, totally optional. I think it would be great just as it is, but I'm just doing a little, a little experiment. All right, you guys, so time for experiment. So I'm gonna add oil, this is already hot. Now this is the concoction with the tapioca flour. Ooh. Now I don't know if I should be leaving it on like this for a little bit. I think I should leave it on for a second to let it kind of brown up, I don't know. Look at me being impatient already. Yeah, see it's already, this would be such a good omelet, guys. See, it's already like becoming an omelet. I think you do need to use a non-stick pan though, just FYI. Yeah, I think we're getting a little more of that gumminess. Now again, I probably should have been a little bit more, in, a little bit more patient with the cooking. Now another good thing about this egg is that it's a lot healthier, you know? You're just literally using beans. All right guys, so I think it's cooked enough. Should I just try it? Okay, I'm gonna try it. I mean, again, it tastes great. Let's try the non-tapioca starch again. Mm, I'm not sure if it makes enough of a difference. I think you could do without. It doesn't really make a difference, okay. I'm gonna try cooking it a little differently this time. I'm gonna try to actually be patient. <laughs> Look at me just pouring at this point. I'm not even gonna measure. So I'm just gonna let it kind of cook. Okay guys, so now we're, we're seeing some bubbles on the surface. I think that's kind of what we need. Ooh, but hey, look at this. It could be an omelet. So I think what I'll do is I'll kind of like flip it. But like roughly flip it. We still want to keep it kind of flat, maybe. Now I'm gonna start breaking it up. All right, guys, so here's the next batch that I cooked slightly differently, although I don't know if I did. <laughs> I tried to kind of make it thin and then cook both sides and then break it up. Let's see, let's try it. Okay. In my opinion, it tastes great. Um, I think the texture yeah, my suggestion is to cook it thinly first, kind of flip it, again, kind of thinly. Try to cook it on both sides like thinly and then just break it up and that way it kind of gives that less of that doughy kind of consistency. Instead of using regular salt, just, just sprinkle on that Mm-hmm. And then let's try it. It's so eggy. 
All right, you guys, so the verdict is, this is delicious, but I do think there is a reason why this stuff is very popular. It's because that consistency, that texture, is quite difficult to get. Um, it's definitely not a exact substitute, but I think this is a very close substitute. It tastes great. Taste-wise, let's see here. I keep, I keep going. Taste-wise, I think I actually prefer the homemade version. I think it has a little bit more of like an eggy taste and it just tastes really good. So let's store this in a jar. I believe this should last in the fridge for like, I don't know, depending on your fridge, maybe four to five days or so. Um, but yeah, if you want a cheaper alternative, guys, check this out. All right guys, this is the next day. I actually really wanna try doing something because I got this idea last night. We're gonna do basically the same recipe. So we have here the soaked beans. Mung beans. We're gonna do a little less of the non-dairy milk. Half the amount that we used yesterday. And we're actually going to replace the other half with aquafaba. Ooh, aquafaba. If you guys don't know what aquafaba is, it's basically chickpea can water. So you know the liquid that you have left over when you open a can of chickpeas and you usually drain it and then you uh, you know, you rinse the chickpeas or whatever. That water is called aquafaba and it's often actually used as an egg replacement. And I just have this idea that it's gonna, you know, help with the kind of fluffiness and the texture aspect. And then everything else is gonna be the exact same as yesterday. Nutritional yeast, oil, our garlic powder. We have our turmeric, our black salt, baking powder. Okay guys, I don't have any lights on, but I just want to try this on camera. So, this is it. Okay. I think it does add a little bit of fluffiness. I think so. It definitely feels more airy than, um, than yesterday, like when I didn't add the aquafaba. Let me add a little bit of the black salt. It's definitely a little bit lighter, less dense of a consistency. It's still not like perfectly fluffy, but Oh my God. Guys, when you add that black salt back in, it definitely tastes, oh my God, it like literally tastes like scrambled eggs. Mm. I think we found the secret. The secret is in the bean water. I think this tastes a lot more like egg than just egg. That's my opinion. But, but that's because I added that extra black salt at the end. Adding that extra black salt and kind of giving it that eggy taste makes the texture even more eggy-like to me. Oh, look at that and it like crisps nicely in the outside. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. Let me know what else you want me to experiment with next. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and definitely check out the link down below for my website, which has my eBooks if you are interested in making a bunch of my recipes. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.